वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल इट्स बीन अ लॉन्ग 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 टाइम सिंस आई पोस्टेड एनी वीडियोज एंड आई एम ग्लैड टू बी बैक टू टेल यू मोर थिंग्स अबाउट फ्लटर मोबाइल डेवलपमेंट पर्सनल ब्रांड एसेट्रा सो टूडेज वीडियो इज फॉर समान हु वॉन्ट्स टू गेट देर वेरी फर्स्ट फ्लटर रोल और फ्री लैंस गिग एंड दे हैव नो आइडिया वॉट आर द मोस्ट मिनिमम थिंग्स दैट दे नीड टू डू टू बेसिकली गेट टू देर फर्स्ट रोल एंड दैट इज वॉट टूडेज वीडियो इज ऑल अबाउट एक्शनेबल रोड मैप नॉट जस्ट एनी रोड मैप एक्शनेबल रोड मैप दैट टेल यू एग्जैक्टली वॉट आर द थिंग्स दैट यू कैन डू टू गेट टू योर वेरी फर्स्ट रोल बिकॉज गेटिंग अ वेरी फर्स्ट जॉब इज द हार्डेस्ट आई फील एंड एवरीथिंग एल्स is better once you have some experience so definitely stick till the end of the video if you are someone who's looking to get to their very first role and without wasting any more time let's get started so point number 1 you have to know git git is very important for you as a developer in an engineering team and also understand that git and github are not the same thing but in git practice a lot of the commands that is available like cloning a project or adding files or committing your changes or pushing a local repository to a hosted system like github gitlab atlassian etc so make sure that you understand git very well and make sure that you use the terminal git commands only to work with git and try to avoid using the ui in the beginning and familiarize yourself with the commands now this video will give you actionable steps that you can follow to take full advantage of this roadmap that means every point that i actually mentioned there will be kind of like a homework that you can do i know homework sounds boring but this is for your learning and making sure that you just not read the roadmap and just like go back to sleep you basically have to work towards making yourself prepared for your very first role so the first action point here is well create your very first flutter project it can be empty and upload it to github by using git commands only and from now onwards anything that you do any changes that you do any files that you add you use your git commands only to basically add commit push etc now point number 2 you need to be very very well versed with dart programming language because it is not possible to understand shakespearean language without understanding proper grammar of english right so that same reason why you will be struggling with flutter if you are not very strong in dart programming language even if you come from another oop language you still have to understand the structural or the syntactical differences that is there in dart you can get all of that syntactical knowledge on the language store of dart.dev however in this road map we are going to be working on making sure our concepts are perfect which means that it's time for your action 2 which is building a project with pure dart and no flutter is that even possible yes of course we can build pure dart projects without any flutter you can either create a pure dart project or build on that flutter project that you have built without any kind of flutter imports or any kind of flutter involvement we just work on the dart part of things now you may ask What are the things that we can build with just Dart? Well, technically, everything that you build with Flutter is with just Dart, right? So any any idea that you have in mind can be built with Dart. It may not have a UI. However, you can always use the console to talk to your code. And if you ask, what are the ideas that I can work on for this? dart project my suggestion is build something that you will use every day like an expense management system or an attendance management system or a goal management workout management anything that you will use every day why is that because you will become your own user and which means that you are going to figure out the bugs yourself you are going to figure out that there are features missing and you will go back to your code base and try to solve it yourself and that way you force yourself and force your project to get better every day because you are your own user so definitely if you are looking for ideas build something that you can use every day anything else any other ambitious ideas that you have we will come to that later i mean you will have all the time in the world to work on ambitious ideas but for now work on something that you daily can use 
So point number three is finally let's go beyond Dart and actually get into some Flutter magic and learn some Flutter UI. Let's go beyond Hello World and Counter App and learn about Flutter UI widgets, which could be stateless widget, stateful widget, the basic UI layout widgets that is out there, understanding how to work with assets, fonts, etc. You should be learning all of that in your beginning career. Basically understand all the widgets and concepts that are required for you to build a screen. I will be working on a dartpad workshop which covers all these basic concepts so stay tuned for that whenever that is released and launch I will let you know. And of course with all of this you also learn about navigation because you are going to be navigating from one screen to another if you actually want to build like a full app and when you do stumble upon navigation you are going to stumble upon navigator 2.0 and you'll be like oh this is something that I need to learn about because everybody's talking about about it of course you should but not at this point of your learning journey just work with the imperative style of navigation which is the original navigation concept that is out there navigator 2.0 can come later when you're a little bit more intermediate now comes tip number four which is knowing how to turn designs into code which is this this point is basically like an extension of the third point because now that you finally figured out the basic stuff that is there in flutter ui you need to figure out how to actually convert designs into to code because a lot of the times interns and freshers are asked to actually turn designs into code because their logic is not that very strong at that point of time so definitely go into like flutter ui challenges or go into dribble and find inspiration there and turn them into flutter code that will definitely like boost and force you to understand ui in flutter and make sure that you add all of this in the readme file of your github projects because you need to build a portfolio of projects at this point of time and these are really great candidates for it so comes another action that you have to do after this point is that get some inspiration from dribble for the dart project that you had built earlier the one that you're supposed to use every day definitely add some ui to it so that it's a much fuller app and you can actually use it on your phone tablet web etc now comes step number five which is again i guess an extension of the previous point why do i even have these points if i have to keep extending them but basically you need to care about responsiveness build responsive designs because you as a mobile developer are going to be building for different sized devices platforms so you need to take care that your design looks perfect and amazing not just in your android and ios phone of the one that you're testing in but also the smaller phones the larger resolution or the lower resolution phones or the tablets definitely try to showcase that on your github itself like try to add some screenshots there or something like that and show that you as a mobile developer care about the different platforms that your code runs on if you really really like all the tips that i have mentioned till now i'm not done yet but if you really like them definitely please do like share and subscribe and share it with your friends because if they also need a job i mean as a friend you're supposed to help them right so like share and subscribe but moving on to the next point and kind of the last point is that uh, you need to start adding logic of course at this point your app has some great ui and it definitely has some logic because you did do the pure dart project earlier however now we are going to be working on with some apis which is basically going to be the communicator between your client app and the back end of the database so in case you build like a to-do app or something like that you're going to be adding a to-do updating the item or checking it off these information has to be sent to the back end right and that is done by the mediator apis so definitely if your app can you know use some apis to basically send the data and store it in the database you can start implementing how to work with apis because it's a very very important knowledge as a mobile developer because we are always consuming some apis or the other now Obviously, you're not a backend developer and you do not have APIs ready with you. So there is a public repository that lists all the public APIs that is out there. You can use any of it that 
fits your use case and start understanding the concept of API integration with Flutter. Now, another alternative that you can do here is that you can basically communicate with the database yourself from Flutter. So if you need like a serverless database, a lot of the Flutter developers use Firebase for Firestore or real-time database. Or if you need a local storage, some storage that you want to store in the device, then you can use shared preferences or Hive. Now, knowing both concepts, are important APIs and storages. However, if you're short on time, you can basically learn either of them before you can, you know, start applying. However, you still have to know both at some point of the time. You cannot skip it because there is no app that it does not have storage or local storage, but it has APIs. Like fuller apps usually have them both. However, if you're short on time and you want to apply right away, you can at least try one of them before you start applying. So yes, comes to the last action point, which is adding logic to your app, which revolves around CRUD, which is create, read, update, delete, and use APIs or data storages to actually work with this data. And that's all. And you can start applying for freelance gigs or Flutter internships right away because at this point, you have some knowledge to work with apps and there is possibility that people are going to like take you in. However, there's so much more to learn and this is not the end of it. You cannot stop right here. You need to work on your knowledge much more, but these are the minimum things that you have to have to do. However, if you want to stand out even here definitely you know build a lot of projects and that usually happens a lot if you are attending hackathons or challenges that just forces you to build a lot of projects so try them either and of course go beyond the basic crud stuff try authentication try building forms try logic revolving around downloading or uploading images data some logic around time zones just go beyond all these basic stuffs and whatever you're curious about start building those in your Flutter apps once you are comfortable with the basic points that I've mentioned here once you okay because the idea is to have an amazing portfolio and that will help you stand out in the pool of candidates that recruiters get so that was all for today's actionable roadmap actionable steps that you need to follow to get your very first flutter gig and if you like these tips then definitely let me know in the comments below and if you're someone who has some other tips that helped you get your very first job please let us know in the comments so that other newbies can learn from your experience and i am so thankful for you that you stuck around till the end of this video and i will see you in the next one and see you tata bye bye